Pat Duffy from the cornfield. Yes. My buddy, Pat Duffy, he has started a video series. Go to Pat F and Duffy on the YouTube. And he's doing um, very chill but cool camping videos. And uh, he's filming one right now that should be available on his YouTube channel very, very soon. But he's doing it from a cornfield. That is cool. I told him he's got to take that very creepy walk uh, when it's when it's uh, pitch dark out into the into the cornfield and see how far you can go without a flashlight. That's what I say you do. I gotta get out of here. Oh God! I think I went this way. Oh yeah, there's my camp. Oh thank God. From the glorious Garden State in the great American Northeast. I bid you all a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever this video may find you. And I welcome you to a children of the corn, a life is peachy, a king harvest has surely come edition of getting weird. This week, this is, this is going to be a good one. I have found a cornfield using the app that I recently discovered which is like, I should have made millions of dollars off of it, called Hip Camp. It is like Airbnb for people with cool property. And I looked it up and I, I searched for nearest uh, Hip Camp location to my house. This glorious 77 acre corn farm was literally 0.01 miles away from my house. So my wife is off uh, attending a family event across the country. I have secured my children and my animals for the next two nights so this is going to be us the children of the corn and according to the landowner a very large bear all hanging out here in this cornfield uh, i have brought quite a bit of gear with me this time because it's an easier access um, we are going to make some corn because we're in a cornfield and it's going to be a fantastic time i am genuinely excited about this i just got here i just found a spot that i think will work we are going to get as set up as we possibly can and we are going to have some good times a little bit of news and notes i started an instagram account for this very series called at getting weird camping getting weird on instagram is taken by a meme account as it should be but getting weird camping is open for business as of the publication of this video so that out of the way Let's plant our flag. Let's have a good time. Let's make some food. And above all else, let's get weird. I believe we are set up about as good as we're going to get for the time being. I found this little patch here with some shorter corn stalks. And it's pretty clear and pretty level. And I have set myself up. So, like I said, I brought some more stuff with me this time, including this tent. Fun fact about this tent, this tent, say tent again, idiot. This tent was the first tent I ever received as a kid. I probably got it uh, when I was 12, so that would make it sometime around 1997 or so, 1998. It's an uh, Ozark Trail, like four or five man tent from Walmart from back in the day. And I'm really excited because I was looking around in my garage recently and I came across it. So I said, I'm going to dig this out. But look at this. I am living the lap of luxury in here. I actually have a cot and a sleeping bag. And I'm going to be, I can't wait to sleep in here tonight because I will have the utmost comfort that I have ever had so far on one of these videos. So I have planted my flag. You may remember that one if you watched uh, Getting Weird Volume 1. I decided to bust that one out because it's on a nice pole and I didn't have anywhere to hang it. I actually have a chair. I have a chair this time. I don't have a broken hammock. I don't have a water jug to sit on. I also brought a table. I have a folding table with one of my old Coleman stoves on it. I have this Coleman lantern that we're going to get to later that I just received. And I also brought my camping bin. My camping bin has quite a bit of odds and ends. And I'm very excited to use whatever's in there. I also brought a grate to put over. Look at this temporary uh, fire ring that I got. So I found an old uh, rim 
at work and I decided that will work really really well for a fire ring so I am gonna finish getting set up here I have a couple things to do before I can button everything down and start cooking and stuff for the evening so I'm gonna take care of all that and I will join you all very soon I am extremely excited to be here this is gonna be fantastic there is a really nice view I should have a really really good view of the stars tonight and since I live literally one minute that way um, there's a good chance I might go home and change clothes because it's way hotter than I expected it to be and I've started sweating but I have the convenience of going home so shut up Pat you know the YouTube attention span is extremely short so shut up so I will see you all again after cheerleading practice and I'll be here then so goodbye well we're back from cheerleading practice and I got an alert that there were some thunderstorms rolling through and I got back here just in time to batten this down so shouldn't last too long really nice over there but I'm gonna go and take some shelter till this is gone <laughs> We have our very first appearance of a rainbow here on Getting Weird. <laughs> I ain't too thugged out. Get a motherfucking rainbow and shit. Double rainbow. What does it mean? What does it mean? <sighs> but anyway, so it looks like that's over with. This quick little shower came through. So I got a little bit of firewood. I'm gonna start cooking. We have a pretty good menu tonight. Pretty excited about it. So let me clean up this tarp and stuff, and then we're gonna get started. It's starting to look pretty nice out. Rainbow's still there a little bit. I'm getting a fire going. At least I'm attempting to. I don't have a lot of firewood, but I am breaking out one of my favorite pieces of camping equipment that I've ever collected in my life. This right here is the Coleman 425B what they call the suitcase stove. Uh, I, I received this, I, I, I think it was a, I think it was a church rummage sale a long time ago, but it didn't have the regular white gas tank, but it did come with this super old school propane conversion, which I think is cool. And I had to rebuild this grate because it was super rusty, but they call it the 425 suitcase stove because it folds up smaller than a regular suitcase. And I'm very excited to make some corn on the cob with it. And I also have some beans. So let's just get this going. Turn this like this. And then you go ahead and. Yeah. And there it is. We're about to start cooking. So I'm going to check in when uh, things start heating up a little bit here. No pun intended. Well, seeing as how we're in a cornfield this evening. What else are we gonna make but corn? Corn's currently boiling. I'm trying to heat this fire up, but it ain't working too well. But I'm gonna keep going at it. But on the menu tonight, we got a pretty nice fat ribeye steak. So let's go ahead and just put this on there and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Now, my wife makes fun of me because I'm not much of a steak guy. I know that that's like sacrilege for most men, but I, uh, I'm not a big steak guy. But this is easy to make, and it's delicious every once in a while. But there are a million other things that you can do with other meats, like chicken. 8,000 ways to make chicken. It's like four ways to make steak. Changed my mind. So this is pretty much kind of turned into a bit of a disaster. I cannot get this wood to light. It hasn't rained all summer, and I'm really having a hard time with some wood. I just keep kind of getting this smoky mess. I had the steak on there for close to a half an hour, like right above the fire, like just trying to get it as seared as I possibly could. And it's pretty much raw. So, kind of a disaster. And I'm not gonna let it bother me. I am going to try to figure something out but the corn's good. <laughs> That's easy. You just boil water for corn. So I'm going to try and figure this out. And I'm going to eat a little bit of this, whatever I can. And uh, then we're going to check back in. But uh, 
So far, night one is not off to the greatest beginning. But I'm still hanging out in a cornfield. I'm still not at work and really can't beat that much. So, you know, trying to make the best of it. Okay. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a fire going. At least not tonight for night one. So, I have come up with a plan B. And my plan B involves this. Now, if anybody knows me at all, I've noticed in you know a couple of videos I did, like intros for my garage and stuff, that I collect anything Coleman. I really like the Coleman company. You know, I'm a big fan of the of Coleman. So recently, my brother called me and told me that he has a lantern for me that he recently found on Facebook Marketplace. Now, when you're collecting Coleman lanterns. The holy grail of it is for yourself is to get the lantern that was made on your the month and year of your birthday. I was born in May of 1985 and my brother told me he had a birthday lantern for me. So I have not opened this yet. So I'm going to open it for the first time right now. Well, that thing's sweet. So first thing I noticed is there's this piece of styrofoam packing in there which this has either been taken very very well care of or it's never been fired but this thing is this globe right here is called the picket fence globe it's supposedly rare and that's pretty exciting the mantles look like they've never been fired so let's get this off of here Ooh, it's got some extra mantles with the old Kmart logo on it that's pretty cool but let's let's confirm now that oh yeah I don't know if you can see that the 585 all right this thing is as old as I am it looks better to be honest with you so let's let's try and get this thing going now these oh yeah careful These have definitely never been fired. So, in order to break these in, you gotta burn these. Let's try that. Wish I could play some music right now or I'd get tagged for a copyright violation again. I never mentioned that, but on the uh, Volume 4, Weirdness in the Witch's Circle. Oh man, that would have sucked. I, I apparently got caught playing a 30 seconds of an Eagle song and it took me like a week to get the stupid video up. So, but anyway. So you let that smolder for a minute. Oh yeah, it smells like old mantle burning in here right now. All right, so let me put this back. Oh, that's definitely an original globe. It says made in the USA. Uh, Coleman shipped all their companies out to, or I should say all their facilities out to China sometime in the early 2000s, probably after BTK got caught because little known fact, the serial killer, BTK, he worked for Coleman in the 70s. So if you own a mid 70s Coleman lantern, there's a slight chance that the BTK, which stood for bind, torture, and kill, he may have built your lantern. So right now, I'm, this is how you build pressure up in this. This is hard to do one handed, especially on this little grate. So, all right, moment of truth. Uh oh. Really? Oh. I think I see the problem. I'm going to have to get back to you. Well. My night is pretty much turned into a complete disaster. 
This is not working. I can hear it wanting to work, but it's not working. So I'm gonna do something dangerous because I feel like I just need to. And I'm gonna just try and light this. Jesus. Oh yeah. Yeah, flames like that are not good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Hopefully I don't fucking, pardon my language. See, look. Yeah, that's not what you want. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and back away from this. Hopefully that'll burn itself out. Ah. <sighs> Things are not looking good for this evening. At least not for a fire. So I had an idea. This thing is full of gas. I have these collapsible cups and I really, really want to try and get this fire going. So, we're gonna do something dangerous. Ready? Well, good old white gas. Let's see if that worked out. I believe that I have had some measure of success with the fireball. I wish I had some fireball, but I don't. I didn't bring any beer with me. I don't know. I'm here for two nights, so maybe I'll get some tomorrow. Um, I've kind of sort of given up on the fire, but unless it's getting hot enough, then maybe we'll have one. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it is roughly 9 o'clock. I'm waiting for the stars to come out. I am going to have an absolutely glorious night of watching some stars. So the temperature's going down. I'm extremely comfortable. Um, I am going to go for a walk in the corn at some point which I might regret I don't know we're gonna see but in the meantime I'm gonna hang out here and we're just gonna relax I'm gonna try and get this fire going a little bit better I'm listening to the Yankee game so far so good so when you're in a situation like this it's all about improvise adapt overcome so my dinner of what I was hoping to be steak and corn turned into a handful of beef jerky and some corn. The corn was good, but here we are. So, the next time you see me, I'll probably be going for a walk in the, in the corn. You ever see signs? is like immediately disorienting. My battery is about to die. Fantastic. If I spun around a bunch of times, I wouldn't know where I came from. And there's nothing at all to tell me where I'm going. So, I might try this tomorrow night with a better fire going. I gotta get out of here. Oh God. I never realized the sheer amount of airplanes that go over near where I live. And like I said earlier, I am, no joke, one minute from my house. 
and I've just been sitting back here. I cannot get this fire to go, so it's been really dark, and I've just been looking at the stars, and I just watched planes constantly fly over. But, um, anyway, it's about 11 o'clock, and I'm pretty tired. I worked today, and I'm probably going to turn in. Uh, tonight was um, really not, not my finest work, but I'm here tomorrow night, so during the day tomorrow I can regroup and rethink everything and definitely track down some dry firewood. That's really the key here. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to head into bed. Uh, the lady who owns this place really warned me about a large black bear that lives in these cornfields. So I'm, I won't lie to you, I'm more nervous about that than I ever was at Camp Coyote. So I am definitely bringing the mace and the air horn and the camera. So barring any, again, any bear incidents, uh, alien abductions, children of the corn sightings, large mosquitoes that are flying right near me right now. Um, barring any incidents such as that, I will see you people in the morning. So from night one at the cornfield camp out, I bid you all a very, very good night. Good morning from the corn hub. You know, even though I'm in the middle of the cornfield, I can still hear the highway, which is not that far away. Very, very nice night of sleep. Very comfortable. I, that cot makes a lot of difference. I feel like I need to try and camp with that cot more often. Um, all right, day two, cornfield camp out. Uh, my plan today is to acquire dry firewood, is to acquire something uh, that will actually light up as far as the lantern goes, which won't be hard. Um, and plan is to relax and hang out and have a good time in this cornfield. It's going to be hot today, so I will probably end up going home and showering and, and you know, reacquiring supplies and try to avoid the heat of the day. But uh, the first things first, first plan, most important plan, is coffee. Let's make breakfast. All right, plan is we're gonna eat this and then it's already starting to get hot. So I'm gonna take home what I'm not gonna need for tonight and get some stuff done at the house and then I will be back later today. Um, not gonna be gone that long. I have a couple things I'd like to get done here today. So the next time that you see me, we'll be back here, but it will be later in the day. All right, party people, we have returned. 
to the old children of the corn camp out. It is roughly three o'clock in the afternoon. I have successfully completed the missions that I wanted to do today. I have acquired fresh firewood. I have made dinner for this evening, which will not be a failure. And I wanted to go ahead and show you the route back to this spot. So I'm out here, right? My car's right there. Oh, well, my wife's car. Nice enough to let me use it. And we're going to go ahead and head into this trail. So things are much, much drier than they were this morning. I could not believe how unbelievably wet everything was due to the overnight condensation and all that good stuff. So. Out of the corn comes our spot. So, we're back, baby. And we are going to probably set up, listen to some music, relax. I'm in the shade again. It's very nice out. Uh, I'm gonna haul that uh, lanternfly. I hate these freaking lanternflies. I'm going to haul that uh, firewood back here, and we're going to go from there. So, feeling really good. Day two, re-energized, showered, shaved up, ready to rock. So, taking a walk in this corn, right? Because I don't have a whole lot going on, and I felt like taking a walk in the corn. And this is where I'm at. I really have no idea where I'm at as far as the rest of the field goes but the point is is that I heard something very large run like very large and it was already through a path that I had crossed I'm kind of making like a semicircle and so I start walking back here and I start going this way and I come across this a couple of freshly knocked over corn stalks and a half-eaten corn cob and I'm pretty sure that this is the general area from where I just heard something big move. When I got here yesterday, a lady told me that a black bear lives in these cornfields. She wasn't sure exactly which one. There's like four or five different fields. And I'm pretty sure that I just interrupted a black bear's lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and slowly make my way back to my campsite. And uh, I will check in with everybody in a little bit. About that time again. Uh, so I haven't seen or heard anything uh, since I came across what I think was a black bear's lunch. So I'm uh, not that worried about it anyway. Um, but I'm sitting here listening to an old episode of Art Bell talking about the Apollo moon landing hoax, which is uh, perfect for tonight. Cause it's supposed to be a nice big bright moon. But I decided to go into the corn again and try and fish out uh, some fresh corn cobs and try and make corn again. I'm not sure if this is gonna work out or not, but I don't know, they look like a little bit past their prime. But I think we'll be just fine. I'm gonna uh, get a fire going. I have uh, chicken uh, skewers and cheeseburgers on the menu. So I'll probably make cheeseburger first and see how hungry I get later. I've barely eaten today, other than the breakfast I had this morning. So uh, I'm gonna start this whole process and I'll check in with you pretty soon. Well, I learned something this evening. <laughs> Turns out that this whole field, right? This field of what I thought contained delicious, sweet Jersey corn is apparently full of rock hard crap that is 100% not edible. I just boiled this corn for close to a half an hour, pulled it out, and I could just tell it was ridiculously rock hard and inedible but you know what is edible those beans right there as a backup plan i decided to cook some beans and we all know i'm thinking about those beans so i got my grate here uh, i have a much better fire than i did last night so far and i got some cheeseburgers chilling in my cooler and we're gonna slap those bad boys on there and i'm gonna have some beans and a cheeseburger and honestly i've had about enough of corn but I do have some popcorn I might make later. We'll see. So, you know, pretty corny around here. What a difference dry firewood makes. Wow. 
That is a monster, monster cheeseburger. And I'm pretty excited about it. So I put a piece of bacon on there that I had left over from breakfast that I needed to cook. And I got these beans here. So pretty good thing I am sleeping alone tonight. So I'm gonna uh, eat this and I'm going to start to relax for the evening. This is my obviously my second night here and my final night here and I'm kinda bummed about it because this is really, really nice. I'm gonna continue listening to this old Coast to Coast AM episode where I will then proceed to stare into the corn and manage to freak myself out. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So it's almost time to uh, let the sun go down uh, start cracking open the old weird corners of the brain and almost time to start getting weird. There appears to be something moving amongst the corn. It's a large Benjaminus Tuckerus. Some corn. Has some corn. So for the first time in Getting Weird History, I have a guest. And actually, it's the second time, but the first it was the first time was during the first video, and I didn't film it. But anyway, my friend Jake stopped by. But now my buddy Ben Tucker has stopped by because he wants to see how the other half live. It's Benjamin Tucker is of the wealthy variety, so Ben is insisting on roasting a piece of inedible corn. See, it's like rock hard. Popcorn. Yeah, it's weird. It doesn't make any sense. You hear you hear all this stuff about Jersey corn being fresh and sweet. And then you put that on there, and it's like rock. It's like it's a it's an ear of teeth. So Ben and I are gonna hang out here for a little while. Uh, he brought no beverages, which is fine. Well, we it's fine. Them. You know, what kind of guest shows up empty-handed? You know. But anyway, Ben and I are gonna hang out here for a little while. Why don't you show everybody the hmm. nice present I got you? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So in light of recent I, events I'm last night. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I take that back. So in. Ben didn't even know about our lantern failure last night, so if Ben shows up with this, which is, um, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, talk badly about it, but it was made in China. It's right there, made in China, and it's an LED lantern, which, you know, as an avid Coleman collector, I mainly just mess with white gas propane lanterns, but that's beside the point. So anyway, I'm gonna watch Ben burn this ear of teeth, and then I'm probably gonna murder him in the cornfield. So until then, goodbye. Apparently Ben Tucker decided that we should add some beverages to this situation. And trying to relate, I told you, he just burned a paper bag and it's, <laughs> this is how forest fires start kids. But anyway, Ben decided that he's gonna show me what he truly thinks of me and gets me a Paps Blue Ribbon beer. But I'll take it. Cheers my friend. Look at that. Ben and I are going to hang out, drink these beers for a little bit, and then I'll check in with you in a little while. Well, I am alone once again. Uh, it's a little after 10 p.m. My buddy Ben just left. Uh, he was uh, passing through the area and he stopped by, and it was nice to see a friend of mine for a little while. Maybe I'll uh, think about doing that more often in future videos, because that was fun. But uh, Ben brought some beverages, so I didn't bring any beer on this trip. I haven't been drinking that much lately. And uh, it was really nice to uh, kick back with a beer in this cornfield. That was enjoyable. But I was just thinking as Ben left that uh, it's really weird how people become friends. Like, most of my friends I've known since I was a little kid, which... According to my wife, is not like a normal thing. Most people don't have the same friends that they made when they were in kindergarten, and I'm lucky enough to do that, but Ben's like a recent friend of mine within the last like two years or so, and it's weird how people can go their whole lives without knowing each other, and then they just become friends, and they end up drinking beer in a cornfield. So, friendship's a cool thing, but. Uh, so right now, um, I'm just gonna hang out here. It's. Very obviously a much more successful evening than night one. Uh, you know, I'm having a fantastic time. So I'm gonna uh, hang out here for a while. I'll probably check in one or two more times before bed. There are an insane amount of stars out this evening. I wish you could see them, but there's a lot of stars out tonight. A lot of satellites out. 
a lot of planes. Ben's a pilot, so he was telling me every which plane was and all that stuff, but I didn't really care. But uh, yeah, so let's do that, and uh, we'll check in in a little while. I've said this before, but do you guys want to know how dumb I am? Or I shouldn't say dumb, but do you want to know how easily amazed at things I am? So I've been staring at this one really bright star, and I know you can't see it, and I really wish you could. But I thought to myself, hey, you have a star map on your phone. You should see what star that is. I'm thinking it's the North Star, right? Because it's the brightest one in the sky. And I'm like, oh, I'm smart. I know what stuff is. It's probably the North Star. So lo and behold, I open up this star map. And that is literally facing southeast. It couldn't be any further from north. And it's the planet Jupiter, which it blows my simple ape-like mind away because when you sit, look up and see the stars, you just think they're stars. But no, that's a that's a planet. I mean, all stars are planets. I get that, but that's one in our solar system. I thought that was super cool. So I'll attempt to get a picture of it on my phone and put it here, but I don't know if that'll work or not. So, but yeah, it's a gorgeous night. Absolutely gorgeous. And I really wish I wasn't as tired as I am because I would really like to keep hanging out here. So in the meantime, let's all look at Jupiter for a while. I was just thinking that uh, it's actually a little chilly out here. And for someone like me that absolutely cannot stand the summertime, that's really nothing but good news. So I can feel that first little tiny hint of the end of summer coming and it feels great. But I really hate to say this, but I'm exhausted and I think that I'm gonna turn in very much looking forward to another really good night of sleep out here um, really pretty pretty successful trip I'd say last night was not my finest work as I said yesterday but tonight was great I had good food good buddy stop by everything really worked out well I am I am certainly one with the corn <laughs> so uh, with that being said from the children of the corn from the follow the leader life is peachy cornfield camp out i would like to wish you all a very very good good night good morning Voorhees. it is the morning of technically day three it is the morning of time to go home it is the morning of back to reality. Uh, I had a, once again, a very solid night of sleep. Um, really, really slept well. And I'm pretty sad to go home. <laughs> I always I always feel like this whenever I go camping, even on the one nights that it's like, I set this whole area up for myself. And now I have to break it all down. I have to go home. It's always sad, but... It's time. It's time to go home. Uh, so that's it. I really hope that the good time I had is able to translate into this video. But we shall see. I hope it did because I really had a great time here. The first night was a little challenging and it was a nice reminder that even though I've been doing this for so long that, you know, maybe I'm really not that good at it. <laughs> Which is always, you know, which is always kind of humbling, which I'm okay with. But so, uh, just really fast, I want to say that um, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, please comment, please like, please subscribe. Um, I'm really starting to, I feel like I'm getting into a little bit of a groove here, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'd like to thank Ben Tucker for coming out. That was uh, unexpected and very cool that he decided to stop by. And as always, I'd like to uh, say thank you to my wife for indulging me in this passion that I have for camping by myself. And, you know, I said this in the second video that it takes a lot of patience to deal with a dude like me. And I am very grateful for her for that. But, um, 
yeah so we're gonna get out of here we're gonna clean up we're gonna leave no trace as we always do and um yeah i'm not sure uh what camps are planned this was kind of like the big one that i had planned so we're gonna come up with something cool and we're gonna go camping and that's one thing you can rest assured of that we will be camping so remember to always get outside you know spend some time in the woods by yourself you will thank yourself i definitely did like i just said you know the first night here was pretty challenging and i you know figured out ways to make the best of it and i overcame it and i'm happy with it so always remember to plant your flag because we were here we conquered this cornfield we did it and you know no, nobody could ever take that away from us and always remember to never be afraid to get a little weird when I told people I was doing this. Everybody said, oh, the children of the corn, Jeepers Creepers, I would never, blah, blah, blah. And those thoughts crossed my mind a little bit, but, you know, forged ahead. We did it. We planted our flag, and we got weird. So, until next time, from Corn Hub, Cornfield Campout, Children of the Corn, I say thank you for being here. Thank you for coming along with me on this ride. And... You know, again, never be afraid to get a little weird. So, thanks, and I will see you hopefully very soon. Click.